to the east of us, which is sort of directly in front of where we're facing now and where she's looking. So we're really convinced that she's got a cub here and she's trying to keep this young male leopard away from the cub. We're just going to move forward a little bit so we can keep with them. She's keeping her body between this young male leopard, even though he is also her son, and where the other cub is possibly. The other cub's tiny, only three months old. And a young male leopard like this poses a huge threat to a little cub. Now there is quite a story to this, and we will go into it in depth, but let's just see what action's happening right now. And again, sorry, I'm so excited. This is live. We're in the middle of the African bush. If you want to ask us questions, send it to the hashtag Safari Live on Twitter. If we listen carefully now, she's making this little oh, and that is trying to call the cub. And then we just heard the young male answer and then she growled directly at him. Now, unfortunately, he might have already killed the cub. It's not unusual for leopards to walk around and call for a cub in an area where it has already died. But fingers crossed that that little cub is still okay. We're going to try to stick with her now. Hiding in the bush just opposite us now is the young male. He's called Sindile. And you can see he's got a satellite collar on him. Now he had quite a rough start to life. A few well, last year, uh, as he was slowly becoming independent from his mother, he caught a domestic dog that came through from the villages. Unfortunately, that dog tested positive for rabies. Looks like she's ready to charge back at him. And just get ourselves in the best position. And we can just make sure we know what's going on. Let's stick with her. As I was saying, this dog had rabies and uh, he had to get darted and removed and go into quarantine so he had a whole bunch of ejections he was off the reserve he was released recently after about seven months in quarantine and she's now moved his way back into the area he grew up with but while he's been gone his mom has had more cubs so he's probably a little bit confused and she's confused. She's got more, more cubs, but at his age, he shouldn't be with mom. So she's trying to keep him away from the other cubs. She's trying to figure out what's going on. He's laying down there. Let's go back to the female. And uh, I forgot to say, by the way, I'm Brent, and welcome to Safari Live. Isn't this amazing? So we get, we're gonna stick with her because he's likely to follow her and we want to be in the right spot to catch them when they, they do tussle again. And a huge Safari Live welcome to Carrie. Hi Carrie, great to have you on the back of the vehicle. Now this female leopard's name is Shadow and that young male's name is Sindile and they're two of the characters we see quite often here. Well listen to her calling. Carrie, I'll get back to your question now. The way she's calling, I'm starting to think that that young male might have caught the cub. But this is Africa at its most raw. She's very, very focused. So Carrie was wondering, is this the first time Sindila and Shadow, these two leopards have met since he's been back? It's the first time we know of, Carrie. So we can't be certain. 
And this, isn't this amazing? She is mere five foot from the vehicle. Wait, no. Get down quickly, she's stalking. Sorry guys, I'm in a bad spot. I'm just gonna have to reverse a bit. Okay, so we've got her right here next to the vehicle. That young male is sniffing about in the bushes ahead. We can just catch glimpses of him. Now can you believe we are live in the middle of the African bush and we are seeing something that very, very few people have ever seen. I've never seen an interaction like this between a mother and a son and I've been living in the bush since I was a baby. See where he is. We've still got her. Oh, he's just in front of her. Let's just. I'm gonna try and sneak through here. You might see me drive over some bushes, guys, but don't worry. We don't actually hurt them. I literally drove through here just now, and they pop up. We're very careful about how we drive over trees. We use the middle of the car. Okay, she's laying down again. There she is. She is about. Oh, you can hear that growling. Listen to that. Now, that's not a sound you want to hear when you're on foot in a thicket. I'm oh, sorry. I'm trying to duck. Are they on the move again? Hold on! We got it. She's look like she chased after him. Vim, do you see them? They're gonna go right next to each other. She's trying to chase him away. But he's not going, obviously he's probably quite confused. So what's my mom doing? But she has to protect protect the next generation of her cubs. So he's actually contact calling to her, going, oh, oh, basically he's saying, mom, mom. And she's obviously telling him, it's time to leave home, son, but in probably a little bit more of an aggressive way. Now, this is alive, I must reiterate you, we are following two leopards, a female chasing a male on this Father's Day weekend, live safari and again if you want to know what's going on i'll try my best to interpret it for you just use the hashtag safari live on twitter A huge safari live welcome to laura Oh, she's going, she's chasing him, she's running them. Oh, she just stopped, he went up onto that termite mound. Let's get a bit closer. Laura, I'll be back with you in two shakes of a lamb's tail. Now, we've been sitting them with them for a really long time and incredibly, they seem to know it was TV time because they literally started moving and, <laughs> and having a bit of action in the f few seconds before we went live. Now we can't set this up, we can't control what happens. Oh, isn't this gorgeous? So there are both of them. And there you can see the satellite tracking collar. Now, now that it's a bit more calm, I can explain it a bit better. So, this has been put on by scientists. It's not often they get to put a satellite tracking collar on a dispersal male. 
and that's what he is. So once he's reached independence from his mom, he becomes a dispersal male. And it's very interesting to see how far they move from their natal territory. Ooh. Hi, Laura. Sorry, I'm back to you now. Look at her, she's still hissing and snarling at him. Laura, I'm gonna get back to you. I think she, there's a chance they might tussle again. Isn't this amazing? Whatever happens, she seems really not to want him to get over there. Well, it looks like we might have a bit of a standoff again, so we can slow things down a bit. Let's try and get you in a good spot to see both of them. Say when, Viam. A bit more forward. How's that? So, Laura wants to know why they are so calm around our vehicles. Laura, well, great to have you on the back of the vehicle, firstly. But Laura, these animals have been habituated to the presence of safari vehicles. They have both had game drives around them since they were a few weeks old. And if you drive carefully and respectfully around them, and you don't cross a certain boundary, you don't push them with the vehicles, they pretty much carry on as normal while we're here. And I mean, this is proper, proper leopard behavior. And as I said, leopard behavior, that I haven't seen before and I've been living in the bush since I was a baby. This is absolutely amazing. Must be because it's the Father's Day weekend. Now, I even forgot to introduce my incredible cameraman, Viem. There was just too much action happening. But Viem's on camera with me, uh, giving you the best view of these leopards. She's, she's shepherding him. She's, she's just keeping him away from that eastern thicket there. Now we're going to try and stick with them as they move through the bush. Sometimes they do make it a little bit difficult, but it looks like we're going for another standoff. How's that for you, Your part? Perfect. Looks like he's using the bush as a little bit of protection. As I was saying about that scientist, sorry, I'm just, there's so much happening around me. And again, we're alive, it's incredible. Now, that, that collar is a drop-off collar. So it's actually got a timer to set. As soon as his neck gets too tight on it, it pops off. So, and then the scientist can go back and collect it without having to dart or interfere with the animal again. Now, of course, it could be a little bit cumbersome, but it is producing incredible research on how male leopards move, or move after they leave their mothers, seeing how far they can go, um, whether they stay close to their natal territory. And the reason they have to move away from their moms is because of inbreeding. They might end up mating with their sisters uh, or their half-sisters. So, female leopards uh, will sequest a tiny portion of their territory to their daughters. And as they get older, their territory gets smaller and smaller and their territories of their daughters surround them. Oh, look at that. I'm not the only one out here, but we've got such incredible action with these leopards, that's why we're staying here. We've got Jamie out in another car, we've got Steph out on foot, 
and of course I think you'd have to meet James who's in the tent. So, but while there's action happening, we're going to stick with it. What I have been hoping is we are going to see Oh, look at this. So she's scent marking. That's a tutorial toil display. When she drags her feet and then urinates, she turns over the dust. What that does, it makes her scent last a little bit longer. And uh, if any of you guys there at home are great movie lovers, the smell of leopard urine smells like buttered movie popcorn. And Laura, I haven't forgotten you. Uh, a huge welcome again, Laura. Laura's in Alabama. And Laura would like to know why they're so calm around the vehicles. So we are a mere six or seven feet away from the female at the moment. And she's grown up with vehicles. So you can habituate the animals to vehicles. They don't actually see you as a person on the vehicle. And a, and a, and a vehicle doesn't smell like anything that they have an instinctive response to. So it smells like gas and oil. It doesn't make a sound like an animal. And if you take your time and you drive carefully around them, uh, the animals become almost completely oblivious. I wouldn't say completely oblivious. They know we're here, but they carry on with their daily happenings without taking too much notice. It's when you start pushing them, uh, which of course we don't do and no one out here does. And uh, well, I even forgot to mention I'm in Arethusa Private Game Reserve in the Sabi Sand, South Africa. For those of you wondering, uh, an exquisite piece of, part of, piece of property in this part of the world. Oh, bless you. All that growling must have got some dust up her nose. So this is Shadow. And she was called Shadow because she can disappear into the shadows very easily. She's about 11 years old, if my memory serves me correct. So we've got an intimate relationship with these animals. We've been following them for years. Oh, there we go. There's the cub call again. See if she's going to do it again. Nope. So we've got a really intimate understanding of the lives of the leopards and lions and other creatures out here. Uh, we've been out here following them with cameras for many years now and uh, we're just really happy to be able to share this uh, with you guys at home and imagine a live I never thought it would be possible in my guiding days to be taking a live safari with people all around the world with you at one time now things have calmed down a little bit with the leopards uh, we're gonna go across into a little break but come straight back don't go anywhere we'll be back shortly Sure. Well, guys, isn't this been an incredible start uh, for our, our, our regulars out there who are unable to get uh, the TV show itself? We always will never forget you and always with us. But isn't this amazing to see both Cindy and Shadow together? And this behavior that's being displayed is incredible. I need to take a breath. It's been so exciting. <laughs> 